Well, the closer we get to the Ryzen launch of the new 5000 series CPUs from AMD, the more my inbox and my Twitter and my Instagram and everything is getting flooded with messages of people asking me whether or not they should upgrade or what. And considering the landscape we've seen of bots and people just buying up stuff, people are afraid they won't be able to get their hands on it. So today we're gonna to talk about some food for thought, whether or not you should try and score yourself a new 5000 series CPU on launch day or wait. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can in today's video. So let's just get right into it. Today's video is sponsored by Micro Center and the Micro Center community. Share and receive advice on your PC builds or discuss the latest in hardware with fellow enthusiasts in the Micro Center community or use the custom PC builder to plan out your next build. Get the best prices and part selection at any of Micro Center's 25 locations across the United States. And right now, my viewers can get a free 32 gigabyte flash drive and a free 32 gigabyte micro SD card while supplies last in store only. To see everything Micro Center has to offer and to learn more about this limited time incentive, click the link in the description below. Third time's a charm. It's our third time making this video only because I kept going into too much detail. I need to keep it simple, stupid. Zen 3. Wait, what's that? Zen 3 <laughs> incoming. We're going to talk today whether or not you should try and buy 5000 series on launch day. That's the topic I want to talk about, but I keep going on to like back in the day. I can promise you right now, availability is not going to meet demand on this, just like we saw with 30 series. The problem is 30 series had probably only a couple thousand cards worldwide, where I really hope AMD has more than a couple thousand CPUs. Unfortunately, AMD has broken some promises as far as I'm concerned also, with having certain CPUs that they have us review, never actually making it to market. <clears throat> 3300X, I'm looking at you. In fact, if you go to AMD's website, you'll see that Ryzen 3 isn't even listed on the website anymore. So that's a little bit disappointing. Now that that rant is out of the way, let's talk about whether or not you should try and buy 5000 series. If you want to buy 5000 series, you're going to need at least an X470X or 470 X motherboard or newer. 470X is the last and lowest CPU that you could possibly run a Zen 3 CPU on. Now the problem with that is going to be, you're not going to get all of the feature sets that I feel you would want to take advantage of on a 5000 series processor. So if you're looking at upgrading, you're going to want to upgrade your motherboard as well. You could get the CPU and be up and running with a 470X, but I would highly recommend upgrading the motherboard later on so you could take advantage of the PCIe Gen 4 ultra fast storage. It's not gonna do anything for your graphics cards as much as people really, really, really want to, to claim that. We've seen this with PCIe 2.0. We've seen the same story unfold with PCIe 3.0, and we're seeing it unfold again with PCIe 4.0. But graphics, is not the end all be all when it comes to PCIe performance. It is storage. Storage will saturate bandwidth much faster than graphics will. So if you want the fastest storage to go along with the fastest mainstream CPUs that you're gonna be able to buy, you're gonna want to upgrade to at least X570. Now the nice thing about 5000 series AMD is it's not requiring a new chipset, it's not requiring a new socket. It is also, as far as I believe, the last supported AM4 CPU. So the socket AM4 is going to probably die with 5000 series CPU. They promised us five years of, 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 of uh, support for that socket. We've seen that. For them to expand now, I believe they're going to have to change that socket to probably AM5 or whatever they're going to call it, AM4 plus maybe. I don't know. That's all speculation. It doesn't really matter. Fortunately, if you're on a 3000 series CPU, which is Zen 2, then you're going to have full forward support for 5000 series CPUs, uh, whether you're on B550, or X570. So that's good news there, where every time there was a new family of GPUs in the past, or let's say GPUs, full family of, or new family of CPUs in the past, it's had a new chipset to go along with it. So at least this time we are seeing a complete architecture change on 5000 series with having all cores have access to the full amount of L3 cache, which is something that Zen 2 did not have. It still had the CCXs with half of the L3 cache available to four cores at a time, all eight core CCXs are now gonna have access to the full amount of L3 cache, which is how we're seeing such an improvement on both IPC and overall performance. The clock speed is probably just a manufacturing process improvement. That's probably how we're seeing the up to five or 4.9 gigahertz now on the 5950X, 4.8 on the 5900X, and then it steps down 100 megahertz basically every tier of CPU. And if that doesn't show you that AMD has definitely improved its process, it's definitely improved its yields, is the fact that in the past, the denser the core count got with AMD, 
the slower the turbo clock got too. And we think that was just because of stability and wafer quality. But now that we're seeing it actually scale up with the core count, more cores, more speed, well, that shows that there's obviously bending and good yields happening with the wafer. But should you buy it? Well, that really comes down to a couple of factors here. And it's, for me, it's always been the same answer every single time. It's the same answer I have given in the past. I will always give this answer. Does your computer do what you want it to do as fast as you want it to do it? It really is that simple. I think people really like to overcomplicate. Well, again, oh, I'm getting X, Y, Z performance in this, but I'm only getting yada yada over here. And I kind of wish it was a little faster there. That's also always gonna be the case. CPU architectures and GPU architectures are always gonna be great at one thing and maybe not as good as another. So you gotta ask yourself, is it time for an upgrade? And you know what? There's a difference between needing an upgrade and wanting an upgrade. I think 82.67% of us want an upgrade before we need an upgrade, but that's okay. You don't need to justify your want. We all want the good stuff. So if you want it, just own it and say, I want the upgrade. I don't need it, but I want it which is perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. Most of what I have I wanted and I don't need. So you've probably decided by now you want it. Your computer isn't doing what you want to, it to do as fast as you want it to do. So you're gonna go ahead and upgrade. Maybe the next question is, should I get AMD now or should I wait and see what Intel has to offer? Well, it's kind of funny. Intel's sort of like Radeon where the last couple of launches have just been lackluster. It's just been a little bit more of the same old, same old, and they, they, they wanna sell it to you like it's something new. Well, it's funny that AMD is like Nvidia in this instance, where they've continued to, e to evolve and innovate and push the boundaries and spend money on R&D and, and not stop and not get complacent. AMD does not have majority market share, but you would think it does with the amount of new Ryzen systems people are building. And it's exciting to see because the old Aesop's fable, I've used this before, the tortoise and the hare. The tortoise is like, I'm gonna win this race. And the hare is like a rabbit, if you guys are not learned. The rabbit is like, what? there's no way a turtle can beat me. So he starts off and he runs and he finds a nice shaded tree and he decides to take a nap. And then the tortoise just walks on by. And by the time the, the hare wakes up and realizes that the tortoise passed it, there's not enough time to catch up. And that's kind of exactly what's happened in the CPU situation. The difference is, by the time the tortoise passed the hare, the tortoise turned into a hare of its own, and there's no way the hare can catch up now at this point. In fact, when the 5000 series CPU uh, keynote was announced, the day before it, Intel puts out a blog post telling everyone that 11th gen, uh, what's the stupid lake? It's Sniper Lake? You know, it's Oh, Rocket Lake. Rocket Lake. Something stupid, right? Sniper Lake. I don't know. It's never been better than Rocket Lake. <laughs> hey guys, we got Rocket Lake coming 2021. I'm telling you as a CEO blog post, because that's how serious we are about it. So anyway, it was definitely one of those, hey, we're still here. Don't forget about us. And I think most of the people are like, shut up, Intel. We've all seen how much you care. And I think more people are interested in buying AMD at the moment. So you've decided you're going to go AMD. You decide you're going to get a 5000 series CPU. You just have to determine now whether or not it's worth the entire upgrade. It's one of those things too that if you're on an older platform where you gotta replace all that stuff, I would just leave that system together and use it as an experimental box. Start playing around with Plex servers, maybe learn some coding, play around with creating some sort of game server or something and just let it stay together and buy yourself an entire new setup as soon as you can afford it. Launch day, unfortunately, for this is going to suck. And I'm sorry, I know as much as people want to believe that you're gonna be able to run out and just buy your favorite new CPU every single Ryzen launch day in the past has played out exactly the same. Just like the 3080. The difference is they actually had more availability than there were 3080s. And, it, and the demand is going to exceed the supply. That is simple economics and supply chain. That, that is a story that has been around since we were trading fabrics for food, right? It's not gonna change. So if you're gonna try and get one, I think now is the time to decide that you want to do whatever it takes, whether it's to notify me or hope that these retailers and e-tailers are set up in a way to be able to actually handle the demand that's coming. But if you can't get it on launch day, it's probably still going to be worth it. The leak tests that we've seen with the single core performance in Cinebench showing obviously the, the numbers that they've showed, but also the numbers that we've seen start to leak on various websites showing Cinebench uh, R20 single core performance being exactly as AMD has showed, 631 
uh, score for the single core 5950X, 5900X being you know still well over 600. Just if you look, that's like 100 points higher than we're seeing on 10th gen Intel. So it's one of those things where the slightly slower clock speed is definitely gonna be made up for it by its amazing IPC. That means gaming machines are going to, we're probably gonna see for the first time, higher FPS on average on AMD systems than Intel, where Intel's saving grace was always its clock speed. But there becomes a point where even a slightly slower clock that can handle, let's say 15% more instructions per cycle than you can see on Intel, it's going to uplift everything across the board. So I think my overall suggestion here, if you're interested in a new platform and you're interested in AMD, this is definitely the time to do it. One thing to keep in mind though, it looks like this is gonna be the end of the road for the AM4 socket. Now AMD has promised support through, I think it was 2021 when they initially launched Ryzen, saying that they were gonna give us five year support on that socket. This is probably gonna be the end of the road, which means for those of you that have like, got an X470 board, and although it is compatible with the new stuff, you're not gonna get PCIe 4.0, you're not gonna get some of the other feature sets that come with the chipset of X570, at least you're able to go out and buy this new CPU, plop it in, update your BIOS first, but plop it in, and be up and running with a new CPU. Whoever adopts this platform right now with this CPU, you're not gonna be able to do that in the future. It would require pretty much an entire platform upgrade. And if you're building a system to last you the next three, four, five years, and that's probably perfectly fine, but it's something to keep in mind that you're not gonna really have an upgrade path. It's, it's kind of like how FX just ended up dying with the 3000 series CPUs, right? The, the, or did I say 3000? 8000 series CPUs, the 8350 and 8390 and all those. It's still gonna be a good system when it's time to upgrade. You can keep it together as a perfectly good box like we just discussed. But I think it's important to keep, take that into account if you're looking at upgrading your system and that it's probably not gonna have much of an upgrade path. So my verdict at the end of this video, is it worth buying? From what we've seen so far in the performance tests that have kind of leaked their way online, what AMD has showed, the track history or the track record of AMD, and so far Ryzen has not, not lived up to the demand or the, the expectations, I have no reason to believe that AMD isn't going to live up to the expectation that they just showed in their keynotes. Of course, you should always wait for the third-party independent reviews. The problem is those reviews are more than likely not gonna be live prior to availability of the CPUs, which means by the time you watch those reviews and go to buy, they may be out of stock. So that's the risk you always have to take. I have no reason to believe that it's not gonna live up to the expectation, but it's not, that also doesn't mean AMD hasn't let us down in the past in other ways. So what are you guys gonna do? Are you guys gonna upgrade to 5000 series? Are you gonna live on that Intel hopes and dreams of the CEO's blog post? I still can't believe a blog post is where they talk about Rocket Lake. A blog post. If there was ever a way that says, we've just given up, it's a blog post. Might as well get a nice 4.0 NVMe, uh, M.2 NVMe X S XSD for extreme speed density. That's never, my, po my phone fell out of my pocket. My phone was like, I'm done with this video. <laughs> yeah, Ejecto yeah. phone, cuz. Yeah, you're gonna replace me tomorrow anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is tonight, huh? 5 a.m. Pacific? Uh, I don't wanna get up at 5 a.m.